In my heart and mind, I always return to Atlantic Island Park. Where's Mr. Bear? I haven't seen Mr. Bear, Callum. Stay in the car. We'll go and ask information. Attention, patrons. The park is now closed. Please make your way to the car park at your earliest convenience. Employees, prepare the park for shutdown. Friendly, nice weather. Solomon, I'm, I felt deeply in love with his natural beauty. It's a single place that created many of my best memories here. This is boring. Very interesting. Wait for mommy, Callum! Over here! There's something special about the entrance to an amusement park. A line drawn between the red and white On this side, the apathy of our everyday lives. And on the other, anything we might dare to dream. It's no wonder Callum ran back inside. I wouldn't want to leave either. Attention employees, the park is now closed. Have a safe journey home. I'm pretty sure that doesn't pass health and safety standards. About 100% sure. You little shit fuck. <laughs> Kid has got some balls. Fun, you stupid bitch. Wait, Callum. To mommy, Callum. Examine shoe. I think this belongs to Callum. Hello? Over here. Shad the chipmunk, huh? Just a drunk guy in a suit. That's 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 not very nice. Wait for mommy!
What did I miss on the left? What is this about? I'm not playing anymore, Callum. Over here. <coughs> Hello. Well, don't let me go on that. Callum, stay where you are. I'll get on that. Callum, stay where oh, you can't are. Get on that. Well, that's fine. This doesn't look good. This does not look good at all. So help me God. Alan, why did you go? Alan, why did you go? Alan, why did you go? Don't do this to me. Near a great forest, there lived a poor woodcutter, his wife and his two children. A boy named Hansel and a girl named Gretel. They were very poor and had very little to bite or sup. Oh, I can't see a thing. Nope. What will become of us? The woodcutter asked his wife one night. I tell you what, husband. We will take the children into the thickest part of the forest tomorrow. And the Fuck you know. <laughs> No, my wife. I cannot do that, said the man. Then we will all four starve, you fool. Hansel and Gretel overheard their parents talking, and Gretel began to weep. Do not fret, Gretel, Hansel said. He crept out of the hut and gathered white stones from the ground to fill his pockets. The next morning, the woodcutter leads the children into the forest. Before they leave, their mother gives them a slice of bread and warns them that they will get no more food that day. Clever Hansel leaves a trail of white stones behind them as they pass into the woods. When their father leaves them, the children wait a while, then follow the trail back to their parents' house. After receiving a thorough scolding from their parents for getting lost in the woods, the children are sent to bed without any supper. Hansel tried to sneak out and collect more white stones, but found that the door was locked. Tomorrow I will take them into the woods myself, the wife told the woodcutter. In the morning, their mother gave them a slice of bread and led them deep into the forest once again. Hansel broke his bread into pieces and left a trail of breadcrumbs to lead them safely home. But hungry-eyed birds snatched up the breadcrumbs and his trail was destroyed. Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. Abandoned by their parents and unable to find the trail home, the children wandered in the forest for three days. Seems realistic. The children stumbled into a clearing with an exceedingly strange house. Its walls were made of gingerbread, and its windows were panes of clear sugar. Hansel, desperately hungry, ran forward and began to nibble on the walls. Nibble, nibble, 
little mouse? Who is nibbling at my house? An old woman emerged from the house, sniffing the air and peering around with cloudy eyes. Oh, you dear children, who brought you here? Just come in and stay with me. No harm will come to you. She's a lying bitch. But Hansel and Gretel stayed back, for the old woman reminded them of their cruel mother. Come, children, don't be afraid. I have something for you. The old woman offered them two enormous lollipops. The children took them and began to eat. You see, nothing to fear here. Come inside, the old woman urged, and the children, still licking their sweets, followed. So taking candy from a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Once inside the house, the old woman changed. She stuffed Hansel into a cage and put Gretel to work, sweeping and cleaning her hut. Your brother will make a good mouthful, the old witch told Gretel. Once he is fattened up, I shall feast upon him. <coughs> Too many carbs. Time passed, and poor Hansel refused to eat, fearing the day that the witch would eat him. The witch, for her part, grew impatient. Today, I will cook and eat your brother, Gretel. Climb inside and light the oven. But Gretel pretended not to understand. Uh, I do not know how. Where is the opening? Fool! The old witch said, the opening is here. And she moved to show Gretel. Seizing her courage, brave Gretel gave the witch a shove and the old crone tumbled forward into the oven. Gretel slid a large iron bolt over the door to the oven. Gretel freed her brother Hansel and together they lit a fire beneath the oven. And though she screamed and begged, the children sat by the oven until her screams had stilled, and the witch was cooked. And then they ate her liver. And then, because even children can't survive on sweets, they divided up the body of the old witch and ate her. Oh, that does, that, hmm? This is a very good amusement park. What the fuck? I didn't even notice that. Fuck me. Get me off this boat. Get me off this boat. and Gretel. I used to read it to Callum when the electricity was shut off. Those poor children. The whole world against them. The forest. The birds. The old witch. Even their own parents. I used to imagine that Callum and I were the kids in that story. Not mother and son, but brother and sister. Hand in hand against the unkind world. We were always hungry. Looking for our own house made of candy. Looking for the sweetness that could take the pain away. Hunger leads people to desperate, terrible places where the tree branches reach like claws. Where did you go? <laughs> okay. This game's very upbeat. Don't hide from me, Callum! Another accident. This place. Is that not? Is that not a 
teddy bear. Callum, where did you go? <laughs> the fucking kid's creep. Just fucking leave him. That's not, I'm turning around. I'm going home. <coughs> we'll make a new kid. Blackjack. Hookers. Isn't a game, Callum. This old thing used to make the blood run to my head. <laughs> make me dizzy. The guy just snapped. <coughs> the boys just started trying to make us calm. Lawrence wanted to go with me, but I've always been a bit wary of those sorts of good coops. I checked when I was kind of thinking at the toe. Ice. Toe. And at first you thought he was making some animal like a toe. Well, I'm. When you first it was a human face smiling at a black, but the more you exit, the more you feel there was something not quite right about the proportions, something unnatural made your heart begin to beat just a little faster, like you were prey, and that thing in the ice was a hunter. Then his teenage walked up and went first, something said, Bridget, I checked my suit, and then, well, he went berserk for a few months, he was scared, everyone was running away from the other one, on the ground, he, he was stab, stab, stabbing with the ice pit, and the blood was spraying, people were screaming and fanging out at the kids, and we were dragging them away as fast as we could. The last thing Frank before drove me away was that the eyeball that one of those poor kids had landed on the ice cream and a horrible feature that more or less alive. Well, that is disgusting. Callum, where'd you go? Callum, where did you go? I can't get on while it's moving. This way or that way? Stop! Kill him! Where did you go? Treachery hides in thoughts. Treachery that lashes like a whip and scars our insides. The first time I saw Callum, my thoughts betrayed me. 
I looked down at this wrinkled, red, bawling thing, and I thought, is that it? We build our world from expectations, and the world that I had built for Callum was no different. He was so real, so there, and so far from my expectations. And they shattered, and as they fell in pieces, that one treacherous thought became a new foundation. All of the love that we shared, all of the warmth and goodness that followed, built on a single traitorous thought. Come out, sweetie. Never gonna catch me. I thought working in the park for someone would be a lot of fun, but the end of the season here really drags. There aren't that many tourists around. Most of the staff spend their time gossiping. It's about Chad. I mean, Steve. See, even though I started calling Chad, I went to school with the guy. Goddamn suit. In the beginning, it was a laugh. Steve, the local lashes. Chad, the chipmunk. Ah, oh, I get it. Child friendly mascot. The puppy dog as well. But the more suit, the weirder Steve getting first. He was looking things up. She was change out. So he was six pounds. Yeah. So he's just still wearing it. He wasn't even working. Right Some of the stuff from plain discreet. So I saw him walking and talking to Mr. Winter one day, but nothing seems to have changed. The suit still smells like a carcass whenever Steve walks by. And apparently, Steve has picked up some new skills since last time. Picking him puke, saw him puking up in the gut right outside the local station because he's sure as he sure as hell can carve a mean ice sculpture. Those shapes he makes in the ice they give me the creep. Steve came by the booth today and he was hung around. I couldn't really tell because of the suit, but it seems like he was staring at me, sizing me up, eye fucking me, whatever he was doing. I asked him what he wanted, he just stood there. I'm not saying exactly. Eventually, I caught my supervisor. And when he came by, I chatted to Steve, wandered off, and I said, What's the way with the Also, I quit. I don't want to see that chipmunk suit ever again. Callum! Fuck! Fuck me! <laughs> This game. Constant crashes in 80s music. Guess it floats someone's boat. Can I ride this one? Where are you? During the transport, the bump cars in front of the truck came untied, causing a cascade of bump cars. And Francis was turned in the direction of Francis was crushed by the weight of the care. Francis was killed. Oh dear.
Fuck! <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. It's a matter of public record that I am a failure as a mother. Once, when Callum was very small, I left him asleep in the car while I ran an errand. Don't even remember what it was. When I came back, the sheriff was standing next to the car, watching my boy through the window. I didn't like what I saw in his eyes. Judgment. He wrote me the ticket without saying a word. Just the scratch scratch of his pen on the notepad. When he gave it to me, our eyes met. I know what you're going through. My daughter, Helen, she... Just get some help. Help was a bolt of lightning. Help was a thousand volts surging through my veins. Help is agony. I'd rather die. I wanted to scream. I'd rather you pulled your gun and shot me. But instead my mouth said, Yes, Sheriff. I'm just stop reading notes because every time I read one, something happens. So I don't want to do that anymore. Check that local. Old oh, man Henderson uses him. People come into your life for a reason. Dad used to say that before Mom ran off. After that, he mostly just drank. Things were different for Don and I. When we met, I was sweeping the floor at Susie's diner. He came in with some workers, but he didn't try to flirt or cop a feel like the others. He just ordered a coffee and sat there, watching me. When my shift was over, he offered to walk me home. I don't know how to describe that walk. We talked and laughed and eventually kissed. It felt like love. It felt like a fairy tale. I can't tell you if Callum was made that night or one of the ones that followed. But I think it has to be that night. That one perfect night. Don and I moved in together, but then, well, he died. According to the supervisor, his safety harness failed when he was working on the top of the Ferris wheel. Don was there one moment, and then gone. Sometimes people leave your life for no reason. I was three months pregnant with Callum. Fairy tale fucking over. Can't help but feel that she's a very bitter old woman. Understand shit things have happened to you in your life, but there's no need to be that bitter. Plus you're trying to catch a child, and you've really proven yourself to be an irresponsible parent, and all you're doing is going on rides in the middle of the night.
Don't be afraid. So they are going to close this place down. Doesn't surprise me. Three suicides from the top of the Ferris wheel. A lot of people idolize their children. You hear them talking about their kids and just the way they talk? Their fucking voices make me want to vomit. My angel likes to read, and little Johnny is so good on the piano. Fuck those people! You give up nine months of your life carrying them, you traumatize yourself giving birth to them, and then you spend the rest of your life as their slave. Wiping asses, mopping up piss, feeding them, little life-sucking monsters who take and take and take until... We all go insane. Any parent who pretends otherwise is just dishonest. That's called choice supportive bias. I am honest. Alan really grinds my gears, and he owes me everything. Everything! It served the little fuck right if I just abandoned him. Watching me. I can't feel it was shit. Where are you? Callum! Oh, this ain't gonna be good. I always wanted to ride this one. Never got around to do it before. It's not like you've got to find your kid or anything, so now's a better time than ever. Let's go, let's go. Mommy is coming, Callum. Okay. Right, I'm ready. Uh, bring it on. Uh. What do you want? What do we need to talk about, Callum? What the fuck is that? What do you mean? What have you done to him? Who's that? I. That's insulting. You and your boy are everything that this place doesn't want. The antithesis of what we stand for. Where is Callum? The poor child. He tried so hard to do what he was taught. He even left you a trail of breadcrumbs. But the park is just so hungry. Who's talking? Tell me where my son is. Which has him now? Has both of you. No the ending here, I'm afraid. Just... Just leave me alone. Fool. You always were.
What the fuck? Let me out, 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 let me out. I can help you, Callum. It works. Congratulations, you've got the chance to be What a wonderful day. I need to be with fueling and so I feel with positive and feeling. What was I saying? Gal? So, what if our children must get inside our eyes and squeeze a door to ourselves? And such doors only have to find the key. I'm not playing anymore, Callum. What we'll flashlight? The witch awaits. What? This bitch is mental. So mental. Mental. Absolutely mental. Callum has bruises on his arms, finger marks. Someone has been hurting him. How do you know? I've asked him. Demanded really <laughs> to know where he got <laughs> the marks. He answered me. He doesn't want to answer me. Something has scared him into silence. He doesn't dare talk. He's been changing too. Something sinister lurks in the darkness behind his eyes. I catch him staring at me at odd moments. In the night, he tosses and turns and cries out words that I cannot understand. When I try to soothe him, he snaps and bites at my fingers. I think he wants to talk to me. Which way should I go? I should I go that way or that way? They are watching him every minute of every day. They are whispering to him in his sleep, changing him. They are taking my baby away from me. I can't save him. It's because you're a miserable bitch. Fucking hell. But I love him, and in the end, <coughs> I don't understand why. Callum? Callum? Which way should I go? The witch put me in the oven. Come back! What are you scared of? Fuck no, I'll go this way. This isn't a game, Callum! All the breadcrumbs. I'm gonna go up here. Oh, I can't get up here. Okay, that makes sense. Shocked by that one. Never found out who did it. I can help you, Callum. Keep them away from me. I'm not playing anymore, Callum. Well, I can't get out of that way, so... Come back! All the breadcrumbs. That's not me. This isn't a game, Callum! Don't let him take me! I'm not playing anymore, Callum! Mommy, I'm scared! You're fucking scared. That's what I'm doing! Saving, so it's clearly the right way, is it not? Callum, Callum, oh, okay. 
Okay. I gotcha. Ooh. Poor bastard. We did this to him. <laughs> Definitely wasn't there. The, these are mine. <clears throat> Your mother.
Hold det. Hvad is a collage of contradictions all of its own. Millions of people die every year in car crashes. And the park has little cars designed specifically to simulate that action. Hear the children scream with joy. In the sideshow alley, you can walk away with 15 cents worth of mass-produced Chinese teddy bears while a grinning carny pockets your hard-earned five dollars. What secrets lie beneath the sullen waters of the lake? The tears of jilted lovers, the soiled condoms of illicit affairs, the clotted blood of the lonely suicide. And the face of the witch looms over it all. I always despised her toothy grin and warty nose. I hate that sparkle in her weathered, watchful eyes. I think Callum is waiting for me inside. This isn't a game, Callum. Okay. Oh, the lies. Don't 
Don't leave me. <gasps> Where the fuck am I supposed to be going? After they let me out, they gave me Callum back and sent me home with a handful of breadcrumbs. <coughs> home bit a sweet home. I barely recognized it. Where there had been color and light, there were shadows and regrets. Where there had been warmth, there was a bone deep coldness that never went away. I tried my hardest to keep the ghosts at bay. Don, watching from the dusty corners while I tried to teach his son to read. My father, Coldly assessing me and finding me lacking. I devoted myself to Callum, did the things that they told me. It will get better, they said. Every day will be a little better than the last. I'm in the woods now. Lost and afraid. Things never got any better. Is this his bedroom? This is supposed to be my house. Okay, okay.
So it's ice pick, fuck. are told again and again and from their shape we build our understanding of the world <coughs> two children are led into the woods they are lost for a time but then are captured by an old witch the child goes missing in atlantic island park he wanders lost for a time before finding his way into the mouth of an old witch in the oldest version of this story the mother and the witch were the same person I never wanted to be the witch, but I am, aren't I? And she started to feel quite sorry for her. Mm, that's fucked up. Whoa, 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 whoa. What 
the fuck? There's nothing there. It's gone. Kid's not there. Calling it. But you're ten pounds. Kid's not there. Yourself, Lorraine. People lose things all the time. The fuck is this shit? Take a deep breath and think about the last place you saw your son. In my heart and mind, I always return to Atlantic Island Park. Oh, is that it? GG <sighs> The game was very good though. It was it was quite scary. Connected. Hello. Hey, Tata. I tried to watch your stream, but it was too high quality for me. This is a first world problem. Stream is too high quality that my internet can't get over it. Did you, oh, mate. Make sure you watch the VOD, though, because there's a couple of times where I literally nearly fell out of my seat. That my internet. Save the vod of that because there's some good <laughs> jumpy parts there. Fuck, man. Right, that's enough of that. Thanks for watching.